Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. What if when you needed a screwdriver or a toothbrush, you could just print it? Well, that's rapid prototyping, and today we're at the Warren Tech Center outside Detroit, one of GM's top research facilities, to learn more about this technology and see how it's changing the automotive industry. All right, so we're here with Dave, the Director of Operations at the Fabrication Facilities here at the Design Center. Thanks so much for being with us. You're welcome. Tell me a little bit about this amazing room. This is the Rapid Prototype Facility, and it's only a small part of our operation here at, at Design Fabrication. What we do here is we essentially grow parts right from math. Originally, they would just essentially lay, cut a piece of paper, lay a piece, cut a piece, and then it would build like that? That's right, and th then a craftsman had to sort of liberate that part from a big block of paper. Okay. Um, today's technology doesn't use that philosophy anymore. It actually grows the part one layer at a time until it builds it up into a 3D piece. The SLA, or stereolithography apparatus, is a photosensitive polymer that gets hit with a laser beam. And anywhere that laser beam hits that polymer, it, it hardens that layer. As the platform that it's sitting on drops, a part starts to emerge. In the industry, we call that growing a part. Right? Okay. So then, once that part is complete, it's uh, stripped of its dunnage and uh, finished to the designer specifications. All right, so now we're in the rapid prototyping lab, uh, which uses machines to make these amazing things. Look at all this, like, all the detail. That comes out of the machine as one part. Back in the day, something like this uh, would come out of the prototyping, which is essentially lots and lots of layers of paper. But what sucked is that people would have to still cut through all this to unnotch it and break it loose. You build something like this on paper, you don't know if it's going to fit, you just print this off, take it to your prototype, stick it in, oh, screws work, great. Let's print 30 million, great. If you think about something as simple as an air conditioning vent, back in the day a creative designer had to sort of sketch that um, and then an engineering designer might put some dimensions to it and, and make a print and make sure it fits in the IP and then it would go to the, to the wood shop right, or the clay shop where right. somebody would sculpt it and then that creative person may say, hey that was close but I'd really like to do this and then the process started all over After again. After you spent right. weeks right. building this right. thing, right. it's right. like, right. oh it just doesn't <laughs> fit. <laughs> It rises out of the goo, just like this. So then you take it down to the guy who's designing the car, stick it in, oh yeah, it's an AC vent. They're actually able to run air through it, see, oh, is it noisy, is it quiet, does it fit, does it look cool? Yeah, all that, great. A million of these. This part was actually developed from the supplier of our machines and our powders. That's unbelievable. Yeah, so that's a part that can be created no other way. There's no tooling and right. no assembly. It has a living hinge, right? A living hinge. A living hinge, wow. yeah. <laughs> You know, there's a whole community of artists and engineers who are designing parts specifically for this application. And yeah. that's, that's sort of cool, right? Because yeah, you're no longer sure. limited by traditional prototyping methods. Yeah. Now, that maybe makes sense on small scale. Um, when you get into the automobile business full scale, Sure. you know, probably not so much. So you can't hit print on a Cadillac <laughs> yet and just pop one out? Not yet, but not you yet. know, it's early. <laughs> All right, that's it for our time at the GM Design Center, checking out this rapid prototyping technology that is changing the world, and quickly, too. And I gotta say, I like what GM's heading with this. All right, for TransLogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. See you next week.